Hello everyone, welcome back. So today I'm going to show you how I made this pump drill. And for those of you that don't know what a pump drill is, basically you have a drill, you have a counterweight or flywheel, and some cordage, they would have used natural cordage because it's thousands and thousands of years old, and you basically pump it up and down. And I'll give you a demo at the end when we're done. Um, they would have used them for drills. You could also put uh, different, if you put like a socketed end on it, you could put a tip on it to do um, friction fire. You could put a tip on it to do the drilling. So this one I have set up for drilling. And what I have in here is a piece of uh, Florida chert that I napped probably about a year ago into a little arrowhead. And I have some sinew on it holding it in. So first one I've ever saw was probably about, it's about 15 years ago. In Massachusetts, there was a place called Plymouth Village, and they had a Native American portion of the village. And I met this gentleman, and he um, was demonstrating on how to use a pump drill, and he showed me, and I was fascinated. I just thought it was the coolest thing. So it took me 15 years to decide to make one, but here you go. So let's get into it. All right, so first thing I did was I had this piece of wood um, I think this might be pine, and it's uh, about an inch and a quarter-ish, inch and an eighth thick, and I squared it off. It is a little over four, about four and three-eighths, I guess, somewhere around there, a little over four and a quarter. So I made a line here, so I got a square. Then I went diagonally across the corners. And then I got my center here, put a punch mark, and then drew two more lines. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cut this off of here. This is going to be waste, okay? And then at these lines where they come down on this side, I'm going to drill four uh, seven-eighths inch holes. And I'm going to fill them with lead. Because you want the counter, uh, the counter um, weight to have a little bit of weight to it, some mass. So this is kind of light. Um, back in the day, you know, they would use stone. And they would drill a hole through the stone and use that. Um, I've seen it done uh, with um, clay. And it basically made like a, you know, a baked clay kind of disc. I've seen people use cement. But I'm going to go with the wood. I'm going to drill a hole. Um, I tested a piece, and it came out to about 5 ounces. Um, let me grab that. I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so I just took a, a scrap piece, drilled a hole. Um, as you can see, that fits in there. Poured some hot lead into it, and I took it out to weigh it, so it's 5 ounces. So I'll have 20 ounces, so that's what, uh, but, uh, a pound and a quarter extra. And... I don't know how much this is going to weigh, but it's going to, I'm going to say somewhere between a pound and three quarters and two pounds this will weigh. Um, if it doesn't work, I'm also going to um, put a diagonal cut here, a 45, on this to make it sort of an octagon, just for aesthetic reasons, but then that'll give me another place to drill another hole if I wanted to add some more weight. So um, let me uh, get over to the saw. I'm going to cut this and drill those holes. I'll give you a couple little snippets of the drilling, and then uh, we'll go on all right, from there. So I'm all set up. I got a 7 8 inch uh, Forstner bit. All right, so I got that at a depth of right about there. So about an inch, an inch from the center line. So I'll do that on all four sides, and then I'll uh, get some lead cooking, and I'll bring you over there. All right, always take precautions when you're uh, melting lead. Make sure you do it in a well-ventilated area, preferably outside. Wear any, all your safety gear, your goggles, uh, respirator, gloves. All right, so now I'm just going to pour it in here.
And that's pretty much it. Once that sets, I'll turn it around, do the other three, and I'll bring you back. All right. So we got the lead in. It cooled off. And I weighed it. It weighs one pound and ten ounces. So we're just shy of two pounds, which should be fine. Now the next step is I'm going to cut off all the corners for two reasons. Primarily for aesthetics, so it doesn't look like a square block. It'll kind of look like an octagon. And if I need to add more weight, um, I'll have a flat spot that I could drill in another, you know, I don't know how much of it I'll be able to get in there, but I'll be able to drill a little ways in and add some more lead. But I don't think I have to do that. And then I was going to put a couple brads in here uh, before I pour uh, the lead, uh, but they're, I mean, the chances of them coming out are probably nil, but I'll probably just throw a couple of breads in. Um, if they're short breads and you tap them pretty carefully, you could just, they'll go right into the lead. So I'll do that off camera too. So I'll cut these corners, and I'll bring you back, and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so we have that cut off. And again, like I said, if I need to, I could drill holes in here and, and add some more weight to it. But I think it looks much better than a square piece. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole. Um, I have a arrow, actually, an arrow shaft that I made. Um, it's just a dowel. I don't even know what kind of wood it is. Um, it might be birch. I'm not 100% sure. But that's all I happen to have laying around. So I'm going to use that. Um, from what I've been reading and what I saw, again, this is just the first time I'm making this, so you're coming along for the journey. Um, that they should be around half an inch at least so that it sort of gets a little flimsy um, But some of the ones I saw primitive ones. They were they were pretty thin So I'm gonna go with what I got um, I mean, I'm gonna drill this hole uh, And then I'll bring you back and I'll show you the uh, the shaft we're gonna use All right, so here's the arrow shaft. I made this is just a dowel three eighths But I got lucky. I was looking around and I found this half inch dowel. I actually had two of these. I believe they're poplar, which should be fine. And it already has a hole in it, so I don't have to drill that. I was using these for a ground blind. I'll replace them uh, in the future. So now I'm going to drill my hole here. It's going to be a half inch. So I'll take you over to the drill press. All right, so I'm over to the drill press. There's our hole. All right, so I decided that I want to make this perfectly round. And I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, so I have this scrap piece of wood. It actually has some half-inch holes all through it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a piece of the dowel, place it in there, I'm going to take my, actually it's a flywheel, more than a counterweight. Okay, so now I have it on there, and it's exposed on the back, so I can rotate it around. Now I'm going to place this onto my uh, belt sander, and then slowly rotate this around as I feed it in, and I'll have this piece clamped down. I'll show you that, you can get a perfect circle. All right, so I'll take my piece of wood and I'll feed this into the belt sander just till it's touching one of the high spots. Then I'll just take a regular C clamp and I want to be able to move this in and out. I'll just start my belt sander. And that's all there is to it. Just keep spinning it around, spinning it around till you get to the point where it's uh, round. So I'll finish that up and I'll bring you back. All right, so I have it nice and round. That little trick on the sanding belt uh, works great. 
Now, I could have originally cut it round, I guess, but then it would have been hard to drill the hole straight. So, um, here's the, uh, the little nails I put in. So, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm actually going to paint this um, a flat black. I just think it will look cool. So, I'm going to give a coat of paint on this, and then we'll continue on. A lot of this stuff I'm doing is just purely cosmetic. Let's face it, it's primitive tool. You know, it would have been slapped together um, with care and uh, it would work fine but I'm just trying to pretty it up a little bit so let me get a coat of paint on that and then we'll continue on all right while that paint is drying I'm gonna work on the handle I guess that's what you would call it um, so I have a one by two here and I have it approximately let's see it's 11 inches long and the way I figured that was I could get two hands on it this way and I also could grab it with one hand it's not too too long so I have a center mark here so I'm going to drill my half inch hole that the uh, the, the drill or spindle is going to go through and that needs to be a loose fit because it's got to slide up and down then I'm going to come in probably around I'd say about a half an inch in and drill two holes for my paracord and just to make it a little you know cleaner I'll take this down, make it sort of that shape. So I'll get my holes drilled and um, I'll shape that into that sort of like uh, this shape here. You can do it any way you want. You don't have to do anything at all. You can just leave it like this. So let me get the handle done. Basically uh, drill the three holes, shape it, and I'll be back. All right, so I have my handle done. Came out nice, got a nice shape. And the drill, the spindle fits in beautifully, nice and loose. Now I need to figure out the length I want the spindle. Um, I'm gonna go a little longer. I was originally thinking around 16 inches, but I think I'm gonna go like 24, because I could always cut it down, maybe 22. I could cut it down, but if it's too short, I'm not going to be able to add it onto that. So let me get that cut, and I shall come back. All right, so we got all our pieces. Handle, I like the way this came out. Looks good. Good contrast. We have our uh, drill, or spindle, cut down. And I put a little drill hole in here to accept this bread, and it comes out in the center there. Because if you would have been making this from scratch, if you would have whittled this out, you'd have a little bit of a taper, so when you put this on and you got down here, it would kind of wedge itself in because you, you don't want this to, to move. Um, I could glue it in, but if something happens and this breaks or I, I use it so much it wears down, you're going to want to replace it. So I'm just going to leave about that much out. I'm going to say it's about six inches. Put my nail in here. That's it. Now that's not going to move. And I can still grab it with the pliers and pull it out to replace it. All right, so we got that. Next, we have some paracord. So we're going to take the paracord, we're going to come through the top hole. Actually, we have to put this on first. And we'll take our power cord, go through it. Come through a hole here. And we'll just tie a simple knot on this end. Like that. 
and we'll measure this side. Oh, that thing wants to roll. We'll just come to about there. Let me grab a scissor. I'm going to cut this and then we'll put it in. All right, so I have this end cut. Put it through. Tie a simple knot on this side. There we All have right. it. So I got it in there. Now I'm going to get a little uh, sinew and wrap that around there. It's pretty tight fit, so I think that's all we'll need. Uh, I have artificial sinew, so let me wrap that around there, and I'll bring you back. All right, so the last clip showed an arrowhead on the end of this with no explanation. <laughs> okay, so I don't know what happened. Um, I lost some footage. I don't know if I hit record or if I deleted it by accident. I, I'm really confused. But I showed this little arrowhead that I had made. I didn't make it on this film. I made it probably about a year ago when I was playing around with Flint, um, Florida Chirk. So I made that little arrowhead and I had kept it. And my intentions was to put it on a uh, the uh, arrow shaft that I had showed you that I made but I didn't do that so I had the arrowhead so I showed it and then I showed you um, I tapered down the end of this drill and I put a slot in it and then at that point I show you the arrowhead fitted into the slot and said I was going to um, put some sinew on so here it is with the sinew on and it's on there good I'll tell you So now next, I'm going to put it back together, and I'm going to show you how it works. All right, so I just have a little block of wood. Hopefully I get this all in frame. And you start off by spinning this around and getting it started. Okay, when you get good at it, you could use one hand. I'll show you two hands demo. And that's all it takes. And obviously, the more you go, the deeper the hole and wider the hole will get. So I'm going to bring you back over to the table, and uh, I want to wrap this up. All right, so here's that little piece of wood. And again, the more you go, the deeper and wider it'll get. And I wanted to show you this. So this is something that they would have used that for. I actually won this in a um, giveaway and I won a bunch of arrowheads and I won this shell with it. I looked up, tried to look up what this was, what they used this for, Native Americans that is. Um, I don't know. This was found in the Ohio River Valley, um, but that's definitely something they would have used um, the boat, uh, the pump drill to do. So I thought that was very interesting. So there you go, folks. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I know it's a little bit long, but um, it's pretty easy to make. And, um, you know, if you have some, some of the tools and some of the materials, give it a shot. It's a fun, fun project. And like always, everyone, I appreciate your views. I appreciate your comments. Um, I really, really do. I know I always say it, and I always say it because I always mean it. Just like when you love someone, you always tell them you love them. So hopefully you're not tired of hearing it. <laughs> And um, I hope you're having a great day, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.